This is Virtuoso Lesson 170 with Bernard Kitchens, and it is February 26, 2016. And let's begin with uh, scales two octaves. You switched again too early in the left. Try again. That's it. Except for in the right hand. <laughs> Remember, you got to get thumbs at octaves. That's right. No worries. Switch too early because right there you see you, you had your thumb and you were a step ahead of where you needed to be. No, don't switch. You're not to your octave yet. There you go. Yep, and that's just normal. By the way, when you were making the mistakes before, every time you did it, the mistake you made was you did the one, two, three pattern twice in a row instead of one, two, three, then one, two, three, four. That's that's always this the mistake when you're off. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
What's after that one? So you can't use your thumb coming up. There you go. And then it's just white notes, white notes, right? you have to stop and figure it out because that means you're really thinking about it and not just using muscle memory. It's nice. So that's good. Let's run the arpeggio starting there with red violet and drop down an octave.
Nice. I think that was the best you've done on those last three arpeggios by far, where you were automatically angling your hands to the correct fingers to start with without hesitation. So that was a really good sign. All right. So let's look at uh, book five, lesson four, song seven. So the first thing is to identify what key you're in. And, you know, you can do it one of two ways based on what we did last time. If you remember, you can either go around the circle of fists to determine what it is, or you can use that cheat sheet chromatic pattern. So it's one, two, three. So it starts at zero because red is zero. Zero. Uh -huh. Then it's every, wait. Uh, it's even numbers from there. If you go every two steps. Yeah, the odd then, so I need to start on... No, you just... You got six sharps, right? Oh, wait. Yeah, I do. Okay. Okay. So you start with that zero. Okay. So we got zero. Then we go... Every two chromatic steps. Two steps is... Oh, okay. it's going to be a white note. That's two. Oh, I got you. Okay, one, two. Uh -huh. So that's two. So that so two sharps would be D or orange. So is it is it zero one? Two, no, no, three. no, no. You don't say it like that. You're just going two steps. All it is is you're going to you're trying to find zero, two, four, and six. Okay, so that's zero. And every two steps yields the next. Two, uh huh. Four, six. That's right. So it's F sharp. Major. And if you were to go in the opposite direction from red, counterclockwise, go that direction. Zero, two, four, six. Zero, two, Right, and that would be six flats, so and that's why G sharp and I mean G flat and F sharp have six flats and six sharps respectively. And then if you want to do, if you want to find out the ones that have are the odd numbers one, three, five, and seven, then you have to start with the number one. So you're starting with either red, orange, in the sharp direction as the number one. And let's just go through that again. So go to red, orange. That's one. And then if you go every two chromatic notes, you'll get then three, five, and seven. So go ahead. Three, uh -huh. five, seven. Yep. And then to go in the flat direction, from red, your first flat would be red-violet. So you're starting with red-violet and as the number one for one flat. So we go one, three. Seven. Yep. And that's how it works. And just think about it like this. You're, the, the, the way to do that, your starting colors all have the word red in them. So red itself is zero. Red orange is one. Red violet is one. See that logic? Okay. They all, I mean, you're, you're starting on a red no matter which way you're doing it in order to determine that. All right, so uh, I'll ask you another question different today. By looking at this song, how many hand positions do you have? Without ever playing it, just by looking at it. If you take, if you take into consideration that the markings on the song of the numbers for the fingers are correct, we're going to assume that. What can you tell about the song? It looks like it's maybe one hand position with some stretching. It's just one hand position. Good. Okay, so if it's one hand position, where's your one, two? Wait. And this is going to be your left hand 
because it's base cleft and it's pointing down. The stems. So that's a. Here. So all you gotta do is find that one and two. What's the what what fing, what finger is the thumb on? It's not violent. Ah uh, no, got it exactly opposite. Look at the what are the colors that are under the one and two on the page? Oh wait, I kind of squished up. Let me see. If And by the way, just so you know, the way you're reading those those finger markings, the number on top is always the top note. Which means the one finger is going to be the top oh. note. That's it. There you go. All right, so go ahead and play the uh, F-sharp scale for a second first, just to make sure you got all the notes. And go ahead and play it with both hands. All right, so the important thing is, when, you know, when you're playing scales, you're remembering the pattern as a left-right. But when you're actually playing in the key, you need to know precisely what those white notes are. So you, you just need to lock in on the fact that you've got a yellow-green and a red-violet-white notes. Okay? Yellow-green and red-violet. Okay. So anyway, that way, I mean, and you got all five black notes, obviously. So that's the key. So let's start with that one and two and run it down. Go ahead and play it down, up and down the scale. Uh Five, and then two and So the question is, if you have one hand position, is there any reason to practice any more locations of this key? Or is that good enough for now? You know? That should be good enough. It should be good enough. I mean, the point is, if you had another song with two hand positions, you figure out what those two hand positions are, you practice them, and then you go play the song. And that's what I'm trying to get you to realize is that what I've been doing to this point is determining what hand positions you're going to be playing in within each song. But the goal is ultimately for you to be able to do it and say, do I have two hand positions? Do I have three? Uh, and, you know, how comfortable do I feel with this key? Can I jump right in or do I need to practice the hand positions first, then start playing the song? Those are all just the more experience you get. You know, sometimes you practice. Sometimes you just feel automatically confident that you already know what to do in that key because you played it so many times and you're just ready to go. But it's always, you know, it, it really is a matter of how experienced do you think you are as, as to whether or not you need extra practice with the hand positions ahead. So with that, let's play the song. Don't count rhythm yet. Let's just get the chords right. The jump of two. So there. Two. 
Just, just try it again. Two, try it again. Okay. All right. So it's. And then moving down to the next one. It's just the very next one. Now you got to move by a jump of two scale steps. And it's a one in five. There you go. That, that one goes back up to, you've got a white note on top. Measure two has a white note to start on top. There it is. Mm -hmm. So again, you need to focus on either the highest note or the lowest note, but not both simultaneously, because that, for one, the highest note, it, by focusing on one, you're going to understand the jump in scale degrees. So, for example, the last note of major one to the first note of major two, if you're looking at the top note, they clearly both are some type of green note. So, in actuality, you went from a green to yellow green note, close to related colors. So, you just, it makes it a lot easier to realize what you're doing by focusing on the top note. You could have easily focused on the bottom note, but whatever it is, you need to realize that step and how far away is a closely related color. Well, it's either going to always be a fourth or a, the distance of a fourth or a fifth. Those are ways to think about it. Let's try it again. So even though this is one hand position, this song clearly jumps around a lot more in terms of its intervals, that's what makes it harder. So you're going from a line to a line on the top note, and that means it's two steps. Going from closely related color from one to another, so you're going from green to yellow green on the top note. Drop down of one on that next note. Now that it's going from a line to a line, which is a step of two. Another closely related move from green to yellow green on the top. Not, that was only one step. Now you've got a two step move on top. Up, 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 up. Oh. You're going higher? Two steps, because it was going from line to line. Okay, wait, so we're... Next to the yeah. last note, uh -huh. yep, going up by two. Up. Uh -huh. And now look at this. You're going from a blue-green to a blue. Again, that's a closely related color, which either, that means it's either a jump of a fourth or a fifth. That's it. So let's keep going. Since we know it's all in one hand position, you're just moving up by one step to that next note and keep going. Yeah, you had the thumb right. It's just, there you go. Huh? Moving up by a closely related color. One higher, moving by closely related color. Single step movements. And all the way down, single steps. You got five in a row right there. And if you can see that, you don't even have to read it. You just go five scale steps. Keep going, scale steps. Uh, you missed your fifth finger. There you go, and there's your second finger. Uh-huh. Keep going. You got blue on top. 
blue on top. No, 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 blue on top. Single step. Back to that blue. By one. Down to blue. Up, closer. Right. There you go. And there's a jump of a closely related color to a close. Look at you're going from blue green to green. Yes, excellent. And by the way, let's look at that measure you're on right now. Go back to that first chord of the measure. Uh, which measure? Of that one you were just on, measure 12. Okay. Yeah, and you're, so your top note is a line note, right? Yes. And then you're going, again, If you're the, the way to count lines and spaces is, if you're going from line to line, that's the distance of a third. If you're going two lines away, that's the distance of a fifth. So you can count lines and spaces. It tells you how many intervals away you are. If it's a line to a space, then that's just an interval of a second. Line to line, third. Line to the next space is a fourth. Line to the next line is a fifth. That's how you count it. So if it's two lines away, you're automatically thinking fifths. And it, I always just kind of look at it as, it, it, is it a line to a line? Uh, you know, and how many lines away? Because then you're just counting odd numbers. It's a, it's a third, it's a fifth, it's a seventh, whatever it is. And then based on that, if it happens to be a space, I go, well, it's not a fifth, it's closer, so it must be a fourth. Or if it's past a fifth by one, it must be a sixth. You see my point? Sort of. Well, I mean, so think about it again. A line to a line is the distance of a third. Okay. So, so if you went down by a third, you'd be going from, from right where you're at. Your thumb would end up being on violet. Because a second would be from green, from blue green to yellow green. That would be the distance of a second. Uh huh. And if you went for, yeah. And so if you went from blue green to violet, that's the interval of a third. You go all the way to green, it's the interval of a fifth. And it really is about reading intervals. That's how the staff system works in terms of the distances of lines and spaces the color helped bring that out because you know things like fifths being closely related colors really helps out when you're starting to expand distances and there's only so many different color variations you know in terms of combinations to be aware of so anyway just play that measure again and then let's go on so start with measure 12 <clears throat> Nice. Let's run it through again and just see how quickly you can get these chords. Again, no counting yet.
Keep going down. Good. Keep going, keep going. You went from a space to a space. That's that's two steps away. Again, so if a line to a line, one line away is two scale steps away, then a space to a space is also two scale steps away. Work it, it, however you want to look at it. Lines to lines, spaces to spaces, they work the same way. Let's do it again. I really want you to focus this time on just keeping going. Try to make a snap judgment and see if you get it right. Nice. How are we going to count this song? Five, eight. Yeah. Right. It's actually not that complicated. You just, you know, just jump right in. You should be fairly comfortable with the hand position now. So just count strong. Lots of syncopation, so don't get fooled by that. It's everywhere. One, two, three, four, five, six. Keep counting loud. The louder, the better. Two, three, and four, and two, three, four, and three. Go on, next one. Yeah. 
try that one again. Jump, try it again. See if you can get it in the flow. One and two. No, not quite far enough. Almost. Not bad for first time out. Uh, you got most of it right. That was good. Let's try it again. The whole goal is if you can keep from stopping um, and you happen to make the right choices, then you're more likely to hear what the song sounds like. I mean, you've got the chords, but you're still not going to hear what the song sounds like until you get this rhythm right. Once you do, that'll kick in. Then you can begin to use memory of that to aid you. So just try to keep going and and you know maybe you'll have it right. One, two, three. Ah, from this crap. Okay. One, two, three. So... 
Yeah, you had it. You just had to hit those notes. Good. Keep going. Right down. Yeah, let's try something right there. Those last two measures, measures seven and eight. I want to see if you can get those two without stopping because you're going. It's a straight run down from the highest point, and all you got to do is count the rhythm right and just realize you're just moving through the scale. So try that again. Count loud. One and two. No. Yeah, wrong rhythm, but right idea. Good. Hit that next one. It was just your second. You moved that second finger. <laughs> Otherwise, you had it. Let's try it again. That was really good. And two. So just realize that, that on the first chord of that major eight, you're playing a one and five, right? Mm -hmm. And then the second chord, you're also playing a one and five. But the fact is, you're holding that first note, which gives you a chance to reposition, being ready to go for that next one, where your second finger never moves. Let's try it one more time, see if you can get it. Keep going and keep counting. So just realize your thumb is going down right next to your second finger. Just think about that. Your thumb is going right next to your second finger. That Nope. Thumb is going next to your second finger. That's a huge jump. Put it right next to your second finger. The next key. That's the jump. Right? Because look at the top note of that second chord. It's just one step above where your second finger was. Keep going. Good.
Yes, nice. This one's tricky. Even though it's one hand position, those jumps are hard. And when you're, and and it's extremely complex because of this intense syncopation. There's not a bit another song I don't think that you've played that has had this level of syncopation. Let's try it one more time through, and see if you can get it. I want I, the whole goal is. If you can convince yourself to just keep counting loud, and as you're going through the measure, don't let off on your voice. Keep it loud. Because as long as your voice is loud, that, that reduces what you have to think about. Because you'll know where you're at. And you'll never second guess yourself on that. So see if that helps. One. Keep going. One, two, Keep going, yes. No. Just start that measure again. Loud. One and one and two and three. And no. Wrong choice of notes. That was virtually perfect the whole way. So are you convinced <laughs> with the counting out loud and the results you get out of it? Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's huge. And the point is, I just want you to realize how complex a song this is. And my whole goal is, is not for you to go out and play this, you know, for a concert performance. It's just to know that you have the capacity to, to just, on your own, take this on and knock it out you know be total control know that you're absolutely playing it right and that's you know and that's what you proved you know you start with the pitch you get it down you're doing the rhythm and as long as you're counting strong you'll get it and then all of a sudden you're hearing it so if you were to play this three four five more times all of a sudden then you're beginning to transcend the count feel it like it's a song you might not even have to count at that point because you start to feel it all the way through. But anyway, that was incredible. All right, let's leave it there for today. So that'll conclude lesson 170 with Bernard Kitchens on February 26, 2016.